Hello and welcome to Crime and Justice. Oh God. I've achieved quite a lot today, even though I'm absolutely shattered. If any of you was here the other night, I went live at <laughs> right about three o'clock in the morning, my time, about Eliza I did I think it's only till about half four on live. It wasn't on long. And I didn't go to bed till half seven. Because I couldn't shut down. Right? And then get a phone call. I think it was about 11 ish from my son. Just to let me know, because he now knows. Do not just turn up and give me the fright of my life. He's going to put me in a, he's going to put me in a grave if he keeps doing that. So now he phones me to let me know he's coming over. And I'm like, okay, okay. He said, you okay? I said, yeah. I said, I just haven't slept much last night but well we won't come over i said no no come over because otherwise i knew if he didn't come over i could just fall asleep in the afternoon which would have meant me being up again to log six thirty in the morning so i said no come over come over i'll do i'll cook dinner you know what i mean so they'll come over and i must admit i did go to bed pretty early -ish. i didn't come on it Yesterday at all, because as I said, I had my grandkids there, my son here and his wife. So it was nice to just have a nice chill out day, you know what I mean? Without having to sit on my laptop and do some research for this or map this out or whatever, right? And um, first of all, I heard my granddaughter then. No, <laughs> no, she's not that quiet. Anyway, I could hear the voice in the back, at the back of me. Oh, it may have been my cat meow. Anyway, so, didn't come on at all yesterday. Well, I did come on YouTube, but I didn't come on and do anything. I was watching other people's channels. Right, uh, I'm having a bit of a laugh. <laughs> Anyway, so, uh, what was it? Then I realised today, I thought, oh, sugar, I was supposed to do that live last night about Stefan Stearns, and I was going to go over the interviews again, like I did with Jen Soto. I thought, you know what, I think we've all had enough, I've seen Stefan Stearns. Well, I was going through the documents today, and I found one, and I know I've got, um, this one's very interesting, well they're all interesting, all interesting. So I've just downloaded them on again to my laptop, even though I've got them on my USB storage thing, whatever they call them, right, I've got it all on there, I thought I can't plug that in without unplugging either my mouse or my mic. And I need both of them things. So I'll just I'll download them again. I can always delete them. So, but I thought, what would you do first? Because I, I thought, just give a little refresher. Just a little refresher on Stefan Stearns. And what a vile piece of SHIT this person is. Right? So, I thought, well, right, when we look at this document, I've got the document ready to go through, and I've got the video ready to go through. Aren't I good? I'm all up on it. And I've done so much today. I've even phoned the housing up about my heating, and they said, we'll put you on an emergency repair. I went, okay. Will, will you be here? someone being in the next 24 hours? I went, yep, I'll be here. I can't believe it, a 24 hour emergency repair for. Normally, you're waiting flipping weeks, months. It'll probably be summertime normally before I get my heating fixed. But no, they put me on a 24 hour emergency. I thought, well, I hope they turn up tomorrow night because 
1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon is 24 hours old, so they've got to be here tomorrow. But no more luck, they'll probably turn up about no, 8.30 in the morning. And I'm going to be, what? What? Really? So I'm hoping they give me a phone call first to say, we're going to be at yours at this time, or we're going to be at yours between this time. So we'll see. Georgia, good to see you. I am baffled that Jane Soto hasn't been charged in this case. I'm actually disgusted how she has been able to get away with this. She clearly was involved, and I don't do not think he she's required to be required to build the case against definitely sick as me. No, they don't need her to build a case against him. They don't. They don't need her. And I don't know if you watched my last live I done on Jen Soto about the the latest uh, police interview she did. And um, you heard him say at the beginning that her solicitor, I suppose, said something like, and they're saying, whatever you said in the past, whether you've, uh, your statements are contradicting each other, have con contradicted each other, We don't care. And I'm sitting here listening to it. I'm going, what? 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 She's lied. She's lied to you and you don't care. What are you doing? This woman, I, said the last time she saw her daughter was on a Sunday evening. Then she tells us the last time she saw her daughter was 8 a.m. in the morning getting ready for school. And I'm thinking, really? One minute you didn't see her, one minute you are seeing, and two different that two different interviews. She said this. So I'm disgusted. I cannot believe they're not pressing charges on her. They don't need her for this case. They really don't. Those sixty charges on their own, on their own. Is in well, he's got more than 60 charges as child sex of CS child, yeah, CSA, you know what I mean, or C child, child call. He's got more than 60, right? Because they found more on that uh disc in his dad's garage, uh, storage unit. So that was enough to lock him up for the rest of his living days. And then they, they know he isn't is involved with the murder because they've got him coming back at ten past eight in the morning. They've got see, they could see her slumped in the car passenger seat. You know what I mean? And all the lies he's told them. So they've got him on that. And the fact that he used Jen's car on the Monday evening, well, Monday evening, Tuesday early hours and the Tuesday morning. And because the dog scented, went and uh, up to Jen's car, to the boot, and signalled a scent in her boot. So which means he obviously had um, put Magdalene somewhere else first and then went back and moved her in Jen's car. I don't know about that, but I'm, I'll have to check on that. I'm sure. Yeah. And, of course, that, you know, when he came back to her apartment, the, the house they live in, she, he had Madeline in the boot of his car outside the house. Yep, because I've got three... Oh, God, what am I doing here? What's going on? Oh, it's my ex again playing up. Why is my ex playing up? So. No, it's not what it's there. Don't know why it isn't. It stopped streaming to X. Okay. Thank you. 
I've heard people say they think Jen was the person in the video. Yes. Even if you listen to that interview the police did with his father and mother, she even states she believes it was Jen. I think she states that, or she said something like, I think that was Jen dressed up in Madeline's clothes. Because Jen used to wear Madeline's clothes. What? Madeline was 13. You're old, 30 summer, and you're wearing your daughter's clothes? Come on. Yeah, my ex has stopped streaming to X for some reason, I don't know. Yes, we. Oh, well, don't worry. She was picked up on that in that last interview. You always talk about I and we all the time. Was you. Did you see Madeline that morning? And she goes, no. <laughs> She's a liar. She's lying through her fucking back teeth, which I would knock out if I saw her. She always insinuates that she was there, always saying we, and then correcting herself, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so we're just going to... Oh, I've got two people on X watching, but it's telling me here it's not streaming. But when I go view on X, StreamYard, it's streaming for some reason. It's right. It's streaming. I know it is. I'm just checking now to see if it's streaming. So, we're going to watch just the one video of him. And that was where he did the interview. Remember when he put on those fake tears? I just want to refresh people who may be coming and watch this or will watch it later or whatever and haven't heard nothing of this case. And if you are one of those people, can you put in the comments where you be? Because I'm sure a lot of us would like to know, because we'd all like to go there. Because the last thing we want on our minds is this sick mother effer. Right? So we're just going to, I've got to present it first, put it on the screen. What am I doing? That's it. All right, just make sure it's up there. Yep, I'll take myself off there and I'll put myself down here. Well, no, then I'll put myself behind, okay? Put myself behind. You don't need to see me. Anyway, so let's go. And as I said, this one, it's only about five minutes long, thank God, if that. But... I think he needs to go to acting classes a bit more. Because I know in Disney, you know if you dress, if you're one of the actual characters, right? Yeah? Like one of the princesses or the prince or Mickey Mouse or Minnie Mouse. You actually have to act like that person. Right? He wouldn't get that job because he can't act. So, we'll just listen to this, just as a refresh for everyone. And it's spelled in both for me. Stephen Stearns, S-T-E-P-H-A-N-S-T-E-R-N-S. All right, so Stephen, you seem very emotional right now. Explain to us. I dropped her off. Everything looked fine when I drove away. So I Emotional. Emotional. Where's it? Where's the emotion in that face? I think that uh, interview needs to work on his uh, body techniques uh, language thing. I think they all should do a body language course. Because there's no emotion in that face. None at all. He's just been rubbing his eyes and making him look red. Last time we saw him. What were the conversations that y'all had in the car when you dropped her off? Not much. She was asleep for most of the way. 
told her have a good day at school when she got out. I love her. She said, thanks. Love you too. That was it. And so where, where, where do you think she could possibly be? I mean, this isn't, as I was told, this isn't normal behavior. This is not normal behavior. She's not the type that would just run off. We don't know where she can be. We're scared. How do you know she's not the type that will run off? Any child is possible for running off. Any child. You know what I mean? So when people say, oh, she's not a, not a runner, it's not like her to run, or it's not like him to run. How do you know? You don't know what's going on in their heads. Or do you? Hmm? Because you was obsessed with her, wasn't you? You was. Admit it, Stefan. You was... Ugh. We just want her home. Are you, in a sense, blaming yourself? It's hard not to. Why? I dropped her off early. I could have waited longer. She looked okay. She was walking towards the school when I saw her. It was like any other day, so I went on with my day. It's hard not to blame myself. What is the conversation? Like any other day, as I understand, I think he only ever took it to school, what, three times? You know what I mean? Like any day, every day. You don't know. You haven't been there since, what, Christmas, New Year? So how would you know what it was like? Sick, 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 sick. Station been with Jen since? <sighs> She's been very, a lot stronger than me. She's been holding it together really well. And uh, then it just keeps coming in waves. This reality keeps hitting. And we don't know where she is. We don't know if she's safe. <sighs> no, we're just we just want her home. Have you, like, literally put boots on the ground, went out? Yeah, I even went out with the cops. <sighs> oh, he put boots on the ground because he went back out Monday night, Tuesday morning, in Jen's car. And I think that, I think, this is just my opinion, I think, like, you know when someone said they saw him fixing his car? I think that was when he first put her in this one place. To hide your body. I think then he went back and moved that body, her body from there, and put it where they found it. Where I had dropped her off, and we looked all up and down the road, all over the communities, and there was nothing helpful. None of the cameras were pointing the street. Nothing, which in 2024 was surprising. The church across the street had some cameras and they mentioned seeing her waiting around in the parking lot for a while before moving on and that was it but it was grainy it was grainy footage and not much not much else it seemed like she walked west east uh, they said in the direction of the school i'm not sure what that is what was the language not language verbally language body language when you drive through all this, she seemed happy. Was happy. she like, I'm going to meet she my friends? Happy. She got a happy weekend. She just turned 13. She had a 13th birthday party. She was happy that we were all together here. And she was just very happy. She was a happy kid. She's very sweet. She's a very sweet girl. She brings a lot of joy to us. And we just. I bet she brought a lot of joy to you. We know she did. They've seen the photos. Bye-bye, Stefan. You're going down. Not knowing. So the unknown is killing you. Yeah, it's like our whole world is upside down. I'm not feeling her presence here is... Sorry. Sorry, you've got no tears. It's hard. I know you're fine. Don't need to apologize. Um, what do you want our viewers? I really think that 
interviewer must have been sitting there thinking, you know when you see him wiping his eyes and he goes, sorry, he must have been sitting there thinking, there's no tears. But he's being just polite. I think he's just being polite. Me, I've been going, but there's no tears. So what are you sorry for? You're not you're wiping your eyes, but there's no tears. Why? <laughs> I couldn't be a reporter. To know when they see some when they see this. She is a sweetheart. She's a very sweet, kind girl. Just please be nice to her. Bring her home if you find her. Tell her that we love her. Wherever she is, I hope she's okay. I mean, if someone were to come in contact with her and you gave her diagnosis, would it be easy to approach her without any, like, agitation or anything? Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's a good kid. She's a good kid. If you can sum up in one complete sentence, waking up, getting ready to drop her off at school, dropping her off at school, to now speaking to me after talking to the police about her being missing for over 24 hours right now. And what complete sense of what would that be? A living nightmare. It's a living nightmare. Day started off like any other. And you know, I just want to wake up. You just get hit with waves of the reality. You just it's setting in. As soon as it got dark last night, we really, we started falling apart. We knew it wasn't going to come to an end. And now we're going on 24 hours and still nothing. No, you didn't fall apart. Right? Because Jen went to bed. Because she didn't realise you used her car during the night until she got in her car on the Tuesday morning and realised the seat had been moved. And you said, didn't, don't you remember? I said I was going out for to have a look around for Magdalene. So she was in bed. Oh, she was fine. She was asleep. Yeah. I wouldn't be asleep if my daughter was child. Daughter, son. Grand, grandchild was missing. I'd be knocking on every door. Everything. The police would have to lock me up for me not to go out looking. Conflicting reports here and there. People say they see this or that. None of it's conclusive. And none of it's helpful. We just want a baby girl back. Tom, any questions? No, I'm good. Thank you. Just hold up there for me. Right. Well, let's just get rid of that for a minute. So, that's just a recap on the first. Well, this was that interview, I believe, was done Tuesday daytime, and then she did it. They did another one which was online. Remember the one where he sat behind her? I was so upset, isn't he? But he's sitting behind her, cracking his knuckles to say, I'm here, I'm listening. Make sure you tell the story I've told you. Yeah, she did. She lied for you. And luckily, just luckily, by chance, all those little mess-ups she's made, like not seeing her daughter, then seeing her daughter, and not having her phone, and then having her phone, and things like that. The police are whoop, pushing onto the carpet. They're not going to prosecute her. I think that's disgusting. She knew what happened that night, but they've got no proof to say, to show that she knew. They need proof, right? And unless he talks, unless he comes forward and says, well, I'm sorry, but you need to look at Jen a bit more. She was there. She knows all about this. She knows. Unless he comes out with something like that, they are not going to even have an interest in Jen, which I think is disgusting. A mother who sends her daughter, a 13-year-old, upstairs to the guest bedroom. 
And it's also said, and I'm going to try and find that information out in the, if I've got, if it's in this, in, in any of these documents I've got. It's also said that 2.30 a.m. in the morning, one of the housemates heard some loud noises coming from that bedroom. I don't, but I'd like to know what she means by loud noises. So that's why I'm, I'm going to see if I've got that, that interview written, see what she says. And because it could have been him opening a drawer, putting something in. That could have been when Madeline was on alive at 2.30. Right. So, and I don't think she was on a lot. Well, people are saying they think it happened downstairs in that little makeshift bedroom downstairs. But unless that noise they heard at two thirty was Stefan and Jen, maybe, or just Stefan bumping about putting something in the drawers, whatever, bumping about in the bedroom, trying to hide evidence and whatever, unless it was something like that they heard at 2.30, where they'd just come upstairs to hide anything, anything incriminating, hide, right? Like, take her teddies out of the bedroom, because normally, her mum said normally she has a teddies that she snuggles up with, and things like that. So, but some it was heard at 2.30. One of the housemates heard something going on at 2.30. So I reckon that was when Madeline sadly lost her life. Anyway, let's look at the information we've got. Now, I wasn't going to share this one tonight. I didn't think it was that interesting. But then... When I opened it, when I scrolled down even more, I thought, wow, yes, this one is interesting. Right? It's, what does it say? Kissing me. Kissing me, yeah. Kissing me, police department, incident case number 24-001829, reporting agency, Kissing me, police Print date, 6th to 13th, 2024. So, that's doing for me. So, this is in, in June. Madeline went missing, when? In February? Okay. Disclaimer, the information contained within this report is... Oh, uh, this is just when it was printed, sorry. No. Oh. This information contained within this report is reflective of the investigation at the date and time of its printing. Right, there we've got an incident investigation report. Agency name, Kiss Me Police Department, and all that lot. But, look at this. Crime incident. Battery, capital, S. Right? And what does the F stand for? Could it be felony? I don't know. But it's a battery, capital, sex, whatever. S-E-X-U-A-L. I'm not saying the word because I'll spell it out, but I'm not saying it. And then underneath, it's got here, individual, not a law enforcement, Soto Jennifer Lizette, her date of birth, right, and her address. Then it's got Stephen Stearns, the address that kissed me, right, 37, yes, she's 35. She's wearing her daughter's clothes. Hmm. 
Right. Let me just get in a bit closer so I can you can see. Okay, is that better for you? Yes. Right. Yeah, this is quite long, so we may not. It's got fifty-two pages, but a lot of it I can probably skip. Now, on second twenty-six, twenty twenty-four, at approximately twenty-three fifty-five hours, I, Officer Clark, hashtag nine oh nine, responded. So it's five to twelve. Responded to 4012 Santa Maria Drive Apartment 107 in reference to an attempt to locate in reference to a missing juvenile case. Report hashtag 24-011313. The Orange County Sheriff's Office are working. KPD event hashtag 24022-60405. Don't ask me what all these numbers mean, I don't know. Prior to arrival, I was advised that the Orange County Sheriff's Office, OCSO, is working on a missing juvenile whose primary residence is a aforementioned address. I was advised by LT Ortiz, hashtag 534, to return to the aforementioned address and make contact with the family again and advise if Magdalene Soto had returned home. Upon arrival, I spoke with Jennifer Soto. Madeline's mother. And Stephen Stearns, Jennifer's boyfriend. No, but you know what? This is what's annoying me. It only clicked the other day. She talks about him as her boyfriend. There wasn't. They'd split up in 22. 2022, they had split up. Right? But they just put on a, a farage, a show, in front of Madeline for like six months. So it took it through to 2023. When Madeline clicked on that they weren't together because stuff wasn't kissing and cuddling no more. Ugh. Right? So that's when. Stefan then moved up to this guest bedroom number four and his father started paying the £600 a month rent. Right? But then, in 2023, November, October, November, Steph, uh, his father told Stefan, look, I can't afford to keep paying this rent. You're not earning that much money at Disney. I can't afford this. So his dad was putting a stop to the rent. So Stefan moved out in the end of November. And his dad said it was the end of November he moved out. Because I didn't want him staying there any longer. Because I didn't want to have to pay another month's rent. So he moved out in November. Yet she makes out he's her boyfriend. He isn't. You split up in 2022. Get alive. Think. Why did you not ever think of your daughter at once? Right? Anyway. Stephen Stearns. Jennifer's boyfriend. Not. Who both provided me with a verbal statement. Summarised as follows. On the morning of the 2nd of 27, 2024. I thought it's the 26th went missing. I thought she went missing the same day as Sebastian. Hold on, I'm just going to check something. She went missing on a Monday, I know that much. Right. Okay. 27th is a Tuesday, so that date is wrong. It's the 26th she went missing. Right. 
On the morning of the 2nd of 27, 2024, which is wrong, it's 626. Stefan took Magdalene to school in a silver 2010 Lincoln MKZ open brackets I Y double R eight two dash F L uh, close brackets. Stefan dropped Magdalene off a block away from the school due to her not wanting to be seen in an old Lincoln. Hmm. They state that Magdalene forgot her phone at home and that Magdalene has ADHD and is usually forgetful. They state that Magdalene did not take any personal items or leave any notes hinting to her running away. They stated they have not had any recent arguments. Jennifer and I looked through Magdalene's cell phone, including her recent, recently deleted messages, which did not contain anything suspicious or hinting to her wanting to run away. There was a text message Magdalene sent to a friend stating, when she turns 18 years old, she wants to live in the woods. I heard when she turned 13, she wanted to live in the woods. I heard at 18, you've got to kick her out, Jen. Right? So... Right. Jennifer and Stefan allowed me to search the residence with negative results for Magdalene. Stefan took me to each family member's vehicles outside of the residence with negative results for Mag Magdalene inside any vehicles. I observed a handgun in the rear back pocket of a driver's seat in the Lincoln MKZ, which St Stefan stated usually leaves in the vehicle. So, that's a bit confusing, because in the interview with Jen, with the sex crimes unit, that didn't phase her at all, so we just went, okay, right, they asked her, was there any guns on the premises or in the cars, and she said yes, and they said where, and she said, up in the guest bedroom and she, they said so it's not in any of these cars and she said no i've never known it to be in any of the cars right so why was the he obviously moved it after that because it was found upstairs in the bedroom right so why did he have that gun in the car? Preliminary findings so far that we understand, and it's the only thing that's been released about the autopsy, is that the bone in the neck was broken. Right? So it's pre it showed strangulation. Right? I, I'm wrong, I think I can look. I observed a handgun in the rear back pocket of the driver's seat in the Lincoln MKZ, which Stephen stated to use the leaves in the vehicle. Stephen also advised me not to pay attention to the going up tyre on his vehicle due to him recently catching a flat tyre earlier that day. Hmm, we know. Jennifer provided me with her sister's address, which is in walking within walking distance of Santa Maria Drive. Hold on. Oh, God. Hold on. Really, I should, I should try and black all that out. Don't give me a dark enough colour. You know what I mean? Let me raise. No, no. Why can't I edit? Right. 
I responded to that address and spoke with Jennifer's sister who stated she has not seen Madeline since her birthday party on the 2nd of 26th. No, the birthday party was on the 25th. Why are these dates wrong? Why are these dates on this document wrong? The birthday party was on the Sunday. Madeline went missing, was reported missing on the Monday. Which was the 26th. I know it was the 26th because it's the same day that Sebastian Rogers was reported missing. But this date thing is annoying me. These dates should not be wrong. This is a, an official document. It shouldn't be wrong. She allowed me to search her residence with negative results from Madeline. She allowed me to look in her vehicle as well as inside of a utility van belonging to Madeline's grandfather. The utility van has been turned into an RV, which also had negative results from Madeline. On the 2nd and 27th, after approximately 23 hours, I was bonded back out to... Well, that would be the Tuesday. To meet the multiple detectives and their supervisor from OCSO while they interviews, interviewed Madeline's family again. After Owens, 914, and I stood by the aforementioned address until properly relieved. This report is also related to KPD case number. This report will be forwarded to the Records Division. A portion of this incident was captured on my department issued body worn camera. The body worn camera and its footage is maintained by the Kissimmee Police Department. Have you seen that one? I don't think we have. Right. Incident report subject list. Name, Stearns, Stefan, Michael, 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 whatever. Age, 37, race, white, sex, male, ethnic, and height, 602, weight, 180. Oh, I think he's a bit heavier than 180. Hair, black, eyes, eye brown, skin, LGT. Okay. Uh, blah, 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 nothing else there. Right, case supplemental report. This information below is confidential for use authorised person. Cleared by arrest. As you can see what it says. Hold on, I will highlight that for you. Okay. BCX, please read it because I'm not saying what it is. Right? Owens is one investigator, the supervisor is Naranjo. Date and time, Wednesday the 2nd, 28th. 20009-02, right. So it's like 2 o'clock in the morning. Zero two. Right. On Tuesday, February 27th, at approximately 23.36 hours, I, Officer Joe Owens, responded to building 4012, apartment 107 on Santa Maria Drive, located at the Venetian Bay Apartments in reference to mutual aid Reference on his county sheriff's office case number 24 011313. Upon arrival on the scene, I made contact with Lieutenant J. Ortiz. While speaking with Lieutenant Ortiz, she assigned me the task of watching the residence of the aforementioned address. Hmm. While on scene, I did not observe anyone enter the residence other than the individuals who were escorted by Orange County detectives. That were on the scene. While on the scene, I did not make contact with anyone else. This includes my involvement regarding this case. So everyone 
He turns up just to stand outside the house or stand by a car, whatever, has to give their statement. Okay? Right. Again. Okay. Investigator Altmore, BG, Supervisor Brewer, CD. Date and time, 2nd, 29, 24. Date and time, 3rd, 5th, 2024. Right? <sighs> On February 27, 2024, approximately 22.09, so that's 10 past 10, Officers of the Kissimmee Police Department responded to 4012 Santa Maria, Maria Drive, Apartment 107, in mutual to a mutual aid with the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Don't start. Oh, God, that cat just my head in. The Orange County Sh If I could shut this door, I would. But I know if I shut the door, he will come up and scratch at all my door, at my carpet, everything. Because, because it's just me where I live in this place. I don't have a closed door policy. My doors are always open. No one's there. It's just me and my two cats. So if I shut a door, it's like, what's she doing in there? I'm going to scratch at it. I want to get in there. So even my bed, the only door I keep shut is the door to my grandchildren's bedroom. They don't need to be in there. That's for my grandkids. I don't need all their hair over their bedding and everything and their blankets and their soft toys. Right, let's continue. The Orange County Sheriff's Office was working on a missing person case that was initiated in their jurisdiction. During their investigation, the Orange County Sex, uh, Sexual Assault Union joined the investigation to assist with the sexual allegations that were discovered. So when was this? The 27th? So this was on the, tw the day after. Right, so when, when did they take his phone? Did they take his phone Tuesday morning? Right. Drafted a D the Orange County Sexual Assault Unit drafted a DNA warrant along with an arrest warrant for Stephen Michael Stearns, however, after further investigation, it was discovered that the incident location of the... I'll highlight that word because I'm not saying it. Right. Occurred in the Kissimmee Police Department's jurisdiction. The, the investigation was then transferred over to Detective Mark Morris as the lead detective. I... Detective Moore, I did hashtag 804, was provided with Orange County's draft ones to transfer for over into our format into in order to submit the ones through the e warrant system. I submitted both DNA and arrest ones, which was approved and signed by the Home Book Judge Reginald Whitehead on February 28th. So this going into the Wednesday now. I went to the Osceola County Community Centre and he had the arrest while entered. Stephen was transported by an Orange County deputy to the Osceola County Jail where he had been held in a bond. Right? So, he was arrested on the 28th, yeah, on the Wednesday. After, it was on the evening he was arrested. What time did I say here? Yeah. It rang by 10 o'clock, he got arrested, yeah? Between 9 and 10 o'clock. Right. Case status cleared by arrest. Okay. I'll highlight any words which I don't want to say because I know it will go against YouTube regulations.
Um, the second of the 29th, 2024, at approximately 1930 hours, like 730 on the evening, I, Officer Wolf 926, drove to the Osceola County Community Counseling Centre to enter a full extradition felony warrant for Stephen, Stephen Michael Stearns. Right? This was my involvement in the case. Hmm. To enter a full extradition felony warrant. Okay, I don't know what they mean by that. I don't know what they mean by a lot of these how they're worded. I just see warrant and I think arrest. Again, I am not saying that word. This occurred on the 22nd of February 2024. Right. But the date and time for the investigator says date and time is the 13th. So that's 13th of March. Right, okay. I don't understand all these different times and dates. On the 2nd and 29th, 24 hours, approximately 0 4, 16 hours, I, Officer is a is a Rizzeri, ID 936, responded to 4012-107 Santa Maria Drive in reference to a follow-up. Upon arrival, I was advised to me I needed to hold the scene and not let anyone exit, enter or exit the residence to disturb the crime. Scene type, at approximately 05, 23 hours, I was, I was relieved by Officer Neves, ID 859. This is the end of my involvement. Right? As I said, anyone... Involved in this case, down to the flipping dog, or even cat. I'm surprised they haven't got them giving their little paw prints. If only dogs and cats could talk, because I think if they could, they would be telling us exactly what happened Sunday evening into Monday morning. No. Oh, this is Officer Neves now, coming on. And again, he was just said to exit, make sure no one entered or exit the residence, okay? That was it. Because this was what he was charged with first, right? When they arrested him, that's what they charged him with first. On February the 26th, 2024, at approximately 20 hours, Madeline Soto, 13. See, they've got the date right here. Was reporting missing to the Orange County Sheriff's Office by her mother, Jennifer Soto. Jennifer completed a sworn written statement to Orange County deputies to the following. Now, this is what's getting us mad. This is sworn statements. This is official statements. Law abiding. Yep. Yep, so. Just remember, that last interview, if you haven't seen it, it's on my YouTube page, but I'll also, it's also in the uh, playlist for Magdalene Soto. It's the last one I've done on this case, which was the other day. Jennifer completed a sworn written statement to Orange County deputies to the following. Jennifer stated on the 2nd of 26, 2024, at approximately 0800 hours, she saw Madeline getting ready for school. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right. There. At approximately 
zero eight hundred hours she saw Madeline getting ready for school. Okay. Jennifer states Stephen Stearns took her to school and dropped her off close to the school. Jennifer said Stephen dropped Madeline off on Town Loop Boulevard between Town Centre Boulevard and Hunter's Park Lane. I'm going to write all these down. I'm go I'll go through this document tomorrow. I'm going to write all these places down so I can map it, okay? Jennifer said Stephen dropped her off between 08.30 hours and 08.45 hours. Jennifer stated Magdalene never made it to school. Jennifer went to Hunters Creek Middle School around 1600 hours to pick Magdalene up and she never came out of school. Jennifer states she searched around the area and then went to her mother's office but could not locate her. No, you didn't search for her around the area. You sat there till ten past four outside that school. Your daughter didn't show up. Oh, um, I'll just drive over to my mother's. And then, because she wasn't at your mother's, you sat in your car on the road that she would walk along, looking for. Just in case she was walking up the road or whatever. You didn't actually go looking for her. You then went back to your mother's. She still hadn't turned up. Well, no, she hadn't. Why would she? She hadn't passed you in the flipping car, had she? Right? But could not locate her. Like, it doesn't make sense. Why would she leave that school without her child? You've got a phone. You've got a phone. I get out of the school, and while I'm walking into the school, I'll be phoning my mum at the office. Has Magdalene turned up there? No. Then I'll go into the office, go to the receptionist, wherever, and say, I'm looking for my daughter, Magdalene Soto. She hasn't come out. Has she got any after school? Because we know she used to do go stay after school to do that uh, decorating the door thing, which she got recognition for. So perhaps she was doing something like that and hadn't told her mum. Anyway. But no, 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 Jennifer, no. I'm not getting in the school. I'll go to my mum's. And then I'll waste a bit more time around by my mum's. And then I'll come back to the school when it's closed. Yeah, when it's closed. Not while it's open. I'll come back when it's closed. Right, Jennifer, what a lie. Deputy Joseph from the Orange County Sheriff's Office contacted the on-call domestic crimes detective who investigates missing persons, who advised to send the report to the missing persons squad. Hmm, okay. On February 27, 2024, Detective Hunt from the Honest County received information that Magdalene did not report to school on the previous day. Therefore, Detective Hunt began his investigation. Detective Hunt interviewed Jennifer, yet yeah, we've, we've heard, and Stefan during the initial phase of this investigation. During his interviews, Detective Hunt noticed some inconsistencies. Oh, so did we. So did we. Hi. I like this. I like this. Uh, this police force. This law enforcement. They know how to do a job. Right. Detective Tagler, Tagler, with the Orange County Sheriff's Office, was also asked to assist with interviewing Stefan during this ca this case. Detective Tagler will eventually put, become the lead investigator for the Orange County Sheriff's Office case. Right? I really need a drink. You know what? I am going to put on a video of Stefan. Right? I know. I know. It's torture. I know it's torture. But please, I, got, I just want to put this on so that then I can go and make a coffee while it's on. Right, well, that when he got back at quarter past ten, Jen was there. 
she wasn't because at 10, 18, you phoned her and she said, how did it go? And you said, well, she didn't want to go to McDonald's, blah, blah, blah. Because she was at the doctor's at 10, 18, 10.15. Appointment was for 10.15. She left about 11, as she said. She got home about quarter past 11. Right? And you was in their bedroom, her bedroom, she said. Where I think you may have been in Maddie's little bedroom, sitting on the computer chair. And like when they, you, she said, we had a little chat about this and that and whatever else out, about Maddie, Maddie going to school and everything. And then you went back off out to do some errands and said you'd be back for 2.30. And you wasn't, so she left herself to go and get Madeline. Right. Now, we're going to... Oh, God, said that's pinching my skin. Um, we're going to read this bit, right? Uh, journalism community. We got to this bit where it's got detective on notice some inconsistencies, which we've just, I've just, just picked up on one or two again. So many inconsistencies, but I've just picked one, never two. Detective Tagler. Is this being shown on the screen? Yes. Detective Tagler with the Orange County Sheriff's Office was also asked to assist with interviewing Stephen during this case. Detective Tagler, who would eventually become the lead investigator for the Orange County Sheriff's Office case. Detective Tagler contacted Stephen at 4012 Santa Maria Drive. Um, Detective Tagler was provided locations where Stephen's vehicle, 2010 Silver Lincoln, had been seen during the time Stefan stated he dropped off Madeline at school. She then confronted Stefan about his locations during the interview. And that would have been that second interview we'd have been hearing. Right? But Stefan would provide answers that did not match up to his vehicle location. Hmm, we know. Stefan provided consent to search his phone. However, he stated had accidentally performed a factory reset on his phone on the 2nd of 26th. Isn't that funny? He yeah, accidentally, yeah. You don't accidentally do a reset, factory reset. Do you think, do you think these police are that thick? You may be thick. But the police aren't and 99.99999% of the population aren't. Detective Tagler asked Stefan a second time if he could, if he consent. I like with it. He accidentally performed a factory reset on his phone. Detective Tagler asked Stefan a second time if he consented to the download of his phone, and he agreed and provided his passcode. T Detective Tagler then proceeded to the security gate at Venetian Bay to review the video. Upon reviewing the security video, Detective Tagler observed Stefan's vehicle exiting the comp complex with a female wearing a green sweater in the front passenger seat. The female was slumped over to her left, which is abnormal, which is an abnormal way for any person to be seated in a vehicle. At that point, Detective Tagler decided to secure the residence at 412 Santa Maria Drive for a search warrant. The Kissimmee Police Department was notified and asked to assist with this case. Detective Smallwood responded to assist Orange County in the search. The decision was made to have patrol officers from Kissimmee Police Department secure their location for the search warrant to be executed on the 2nd of 28th. And we know that because when she was talking to Jen on the Tuesday, right, the 27th, she said, right, we need you all out of that house tonight because it's going to be secured, because then tomorrow morning we're going to have the forensics and all that lot coming. Right? On February 28th, Detective Mark Morris was called to act and asked to respond to, to assist Orange County in exec, exec, 
executing a search warrant for their missing person case. All right. Again, I'm not saying it, it's highlighted there. I don't think I'll be getting through all this tonight. Upon my arrival, I contacted Johnny's County deputies who were waiting for the forensics unit to arrive to, ex to execute the search warrant. While I was County was serving a search warrant on the premises, a subsequent search warrant was ex ex <laughs> executed on Stephen's cellular mobile phone. Upon reviewing the contents of Stephen's phone, it was discovered several images were saved in a Google Drive. A separate search warrant was served to Google, and upon the receipt of the contents of Steph Stephen's Google Drive, several images and videos were located which depicted an apparent child with a... I'm the, I'll, I'll just highlight it, okay? Right, as the focal point of the picture slash videos, there were also pictures and videos depicting a child, a parent child. Right now, this is what gets me. They what to name your list. But I didn't re redact this, you know what I mean? During this time, it was also discovered Stefan did not drop Madeline off school, as he previously stated. Based upon the contents of Stefan's Google Drive and the suspicious nature of Madeline going missing, it was decided that I, that I become became the lead investigator from the Kissimmee Police Department. Corporal Ilgang and I responded to Orange County Sheriff's Office where deputies had already arranged for Jennifer and Stephen to be transport transported there for a press conference. Now we listened to all those interviews the other night with Jen and the one was where she was in the car with one of the detectives or police officers and she was on the phone to her family and she's going, yeah, I'm in one car and Stefan's in another car because that car's bigger for him, more like more space. No, no, it was so they had you separated. Stupid bitch. Right? Right. I was shown the contents of Stefan Google's drive where one folder that appeared to dedicate to obtained over 1,700 files. Wow. A majority of these photo photographs and videos showed in different... <laughs> right? Based upon these images, Orange County, photo Orange County detectives began to, to author an arrest warrant for his death file. Due to the fact that most of these images appear to have occurred hmm, location, probable cause was provided to Detective, to Detective Moore of the Kissimmee Police Department. Detective Moore wrote the arrest warrant charging Stefan with and possession of child porn. Okay? While the arrest warrants were being written and obtained by Detective Moore, at approximately 16.40 hours, I contacted Jennifer in a conference room at the Sheriff's Office. Jennifer was asked questions about Madeline being missing and the dynamics of the household. Jeff Jennifer stated her and Stefan had been dating on and off for approximately seven years. Stefan had moved out of the home in the later part of 2023. Yeah, we know. Jennifer stated while they were together they would either all sleep in the same bed or Madeline would sleep 
with her and Stefan. With her when Stefan, Stefan was not there. When asked if it was normal that Stefan and Madeline to sleep together without her being there, and she said yes. Ooh. Please, someone give this woman a slap or two, or three, or four, or five, or six. Anything. Jennifer asked Stacey if she needed a good night's sleep due to her anxiety. She would ask them to sleep in a different bedroom. You've got a king size or queen size bed, whatever size it is. It's a big bed. You don't kick your daughter out of that bed to go to sleep with a 37 or whatever year old man. Orange County detectives had previously shown Jennifer photographs of Stephen's P for identification purposes. Jennifer did not want believe and Stephen blank something and Stephen were engaged in sex sexual activity. Jennifer hold on. Jennifer asked to see the image of Stephen's you know what? Lunchbox. I pulled out a printed picture from Stephen's Google sh- Drive that uh, showed mm, ma- M with S Stephen's P in mouth. Jennifer said she didn't recognize anything in the picture as if she was in denial. However, she became visibly upset. I asked Jennifer additional questions unrelated to this particular case. I excused myself and told her that I was going to speak with Stefan. I contacted Stefan in an interview room at the sheriff's office. Stefan was asleep when I entered the room, along with Corporal Ilgen. After introducing ourselves, I explained the reason why we were speaking with him. I read Stefan his Miranda warnings, which he waived and agreed to speak with us. Silly man, silly man. But in a way, I'm glad he did. Case supplemental report. Oh, still, that is what he's been charged, was was first charged with. Gen- Jennifer said for several years, and I date for most of that time, I asked Stefan what the sleeping arrangements were within the home. Stefan stated Madeline typically sleeps with Jennifer in Jennifer's bed. Stefan stated Madeline wanted them all to sleep in the same bed when he returned from being away for several months. I don't think she did. Oh, mummy, mummy, can we all sleep in the same bed? I've missed him so much. I don't think she did. Stefan stated Madeline always needed human contact when going to sleep. Stefan referred to it as snuggling. Oh. Give me a bucky. As the interview went on, I asked Stefan, always haven't crossed her name out, if Madeline has ever been with anyone in the past. Stefan stated there was an inter- incident when she was younger. Stefan said Madeline did something with a phone or camera, but she wasn't scolded for it. Hmm. Stefan said she was very young when this happened. How young? She was only 13, so how, how old was she when she got a phone? I asked Stefan if he provided Orange County deputies consent to search Drew's phone, and he stated yes. I asked Stefan if he had a Google account, and he stated he did. I think I've got a, I've got a Google account, but don't even ask me my password. I wouldn't know it. When I asked Stefan if he saved pictures to that account, he said sometimes. Stefan stated he did have he did have pictures of him and Madeline saved to that account. <gasps> when I asked Stefan about all the pictures he had saved, Stefan then asked if if he should be talking to a lawyer. Hmm, I think he clicked on, don't you? When I asked Stefan about 
Stefan, a lawyer. Shortly after that, Stefan requested an attorney. Stefan was arrested for when the victim was under 12 years old and possession of child corn. A search warrant was obtained to collect DNA from Stephen. This warrant was ex executed by Orange County Detectives and Forensics Unit. I was able to search through Stephen's Google account and observe the following videos images. Now this I will say I'm going to have to put this up. I'm going to have to put this up. I think I've still got it on here. Right, a lot of this is triggering. Right, I should have put up sooner. A lot of this is triggering. Right. So please, if you're under 18, A, you shouldn't be on my page because this is a true crime channel and for adults. So if you're under 18, walk out the door now. And don't come back. If you're over 18, you're more than welcome to stay. Right, hold on. Let's take that off. File name 201-90702-205542-1, whatever. Description. Video file depicting a prepubescent female resembling who would have been is laying next to Stefan in a bed watching cartoons on the television. Stefan is asking to put his pee in her mouth for three seconds as he comes. Stefan states mm, would not be able to play with a phone unless she did. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <sighs> image file. Next one. Description. Image file depicting. Stefan is inserting his finger into... Well, a pet is to be sleeping. So while she is sleeping, he's doing vile things to her. That's vile. He probably had your conked out on so much medication. Image file depicting Stefan is inserting his P into mouth while appears to be sleeping. Now, I'm sorry, but if he did that, she would choke. If she was sleeping, she would be choke. She'd choke, right? So, how on earth could you do that without that poor child choking? Next one. Image file depicting Stefan is inserting his pee into while appears to be sleeping. Again. Stefan, image file depicting. Stefan is inserting his pee into mouth while is underneath. Madeline is underneath a blanket. Sick, sick, sick. Right, we're only on page 14. Description, image, file depicting Stefan is inserting his P into identifying is confirmed by a mark. There's a, a mark, like a, a, like a little pink mole or Something like that. There's a mark on his P. The same mark is seen in several other photographs of right, I went a bit too far then. Image file depicting Stefan is inserting his P into Oh my lord. 
identity, identity is confirmed by the, the same mark is seen in several other photographs. This is, oh, that would hurt a young girl. That would hurt a young girl. Stefan, next one. Here. This one. Oh, here. Okay. Image file depicting sexual offence identity. Stefan is inserting his P into sexual mouth while well, it appears to be sleeping. It does state, it, I did hear that a lot of the photographs that they found looked like she was sleeping. But I'm sure if something went, if someone put something in her mouth, she'd wake up. You know what I mean? Because she would be choking. Right? Next file. Oh, get off. Oh. I'll get rid of all this. Get rid of it. Image file depicting Stefan is inserting his penis. I've never seen that one. Image file depicting sexual offence identity. Stefan is inserting his P into V identities confirmed by this same mark is seen on several photographs. Yeah. There were hundreds of other images containing sexual within sex Stefan's Google account with most of them depicting a copy of Stefan's Google account was submitted into evidence. This supplement will be forwarded to the state attorney's office. Right, I will not I will not put you all through that again. No. Oh, God. Next one. Jennifer provided a sworn written statement to Orange County deputies summarised as follows. On the 2nd of 26, 2024, at approximately 0800 hours, Jennifer saw Madeline getting ready for school. Right? Now, we've read all this before in one before. Bed all that before. Right, now we get down to this bit here. On February 27th, Detective Hunt from the Orange County's office was assigned to the case. Therefore, Detective Hunt began his investigation. Where we've just listened to those two, well, we've listened to Jen's interview with him and we've just listened to his, Stefan's interview with him. Later, Detective, Detective Tagler with the Orange County Sheriff's Office arrived on scene and was asked to assist with interviewing Stefan, which she did. Right? On February 27, 2024, at approximately 2100 hours, our de Detective Smallwood responded to 4012 Santa Maria Drive, apartment 107, to assist Detective Hunt and the Orange County Sheriff's Office with the investigation. At the time of my arrival, Jennifer Stefan and their roommates were out of the residence and the residence was, was secured pending a search warrant. Now, you know what? Jen was worried when you heard that sex crimes unit detective say, well, look, we need you out of that house tonight because we're going to have it all secured, ready for forensics in the morning. Um... I said, any questions? And she's going, oh, I'm just worried about where we're going to stay. Uh, what about your two roommates? You've just, they've just been turfed out of their home. You know what I mean? Where are they going to go? Don't worry about them. You know what I mean? You've just turfed out. Your two roommates have just been turfed out of their rooms.
But no, don't worry about that. Just worry about yourself, sweetheart. Right, so that was at nine o'clock. So those two interviews she did, one was in the day and one was on the evening because we know that because the woman interviewing her online was standing outside talking to her or somewhere and it was dark. Right? On February 28th, 2024, the search warrant for the res residents was executed. During the execution of the warrant, information was discovered from Stefan's cell phone and it was also discovered discovered Stefan never dropped Madeleine off at school. At that time, Detective Morris assigned as a lead investigator on the case and the investigation was turned over to Kissimmee Police Department. Right. What am I looking at now? I'm on the uh, trying to drive, I think we're seeing, we've read, a lot of this is just repeating itself. Security, upon arrival, I'm seeing a mad contact. Right, this can be, right, that's nothing. That's nothing. Skip through that one. I'm um, also trying to do in with reference to it, but I'm just going to run saying No, that's nothing. Nah, I don't know nothing. It's just a repeat. Right, um, at, on the 2nd of 29th, 2024, at 0, 1, 2, 3 hours, I, Officer A. Lachman, ID 733, was dispatched to 4012, Santa Maria Drive in reference to a missing person. There was yellow tape, yellow police tape around the residence. I provided seeing security to ensure no unauthorized persons and at 0158 hours, Officer A. Morales relieved me of my duties. Right? Right, so that's nothing. Nothing again. And I think the next one would be Morales. Was he? Uh, right, let's just see what this one says, right? Okay, supplement report. There it is again. Okay. There it is again. Right. Time arrived, 15.35 hours. Time cleared, 20.30 hours. Morris Mark, ID 515. Technician, Beloma Isabella, ID 881. Offender Stephen Michael Stearns, RSWA, date of birth, involved, involved, so to Jennifer Lizette. Photographs. Yes or no? Total number of photographs taken. 710 photographs were taken of that house. Videos. Yes or no? Total number of videos taken. Two. Evidence, yes or no. Total submitted 20 pieces of evidence were submitted from the house. Not a lot, really, is it? Pieces of evidence from the house. Right? On Thursday, February 29, 2024, at approximately 14.40 hours, the Criminal Investigation Division requested the response of the forensic unit to resident located at the above listed location in reference to a SB above listed case number. It was later determined that the victim lives listed above. Hmm? Prior to my response, I was advised that Orange County Sheriff's Office deputies and the crime scene investigator. <sighs> During the Orange County Sheriff's Office missing persons investigation, it was that it was discovered that the above listed victim Resort residence, which is located within the Kissimmee Police Department's jurisdiction, hence the request for our response. Upon arrival, I met with Detective M. Morris, who requested our document and collect items of evidentiary value. 
The residents were documented via digital photographs. Items of evidence were documented and collected. The resident was cleared at approximately 20 to 30 hours. Right, so it got there at 14.45 hours, quarter, quarter to three, and he didn't leave till 8.30. Wow, that's a long time. The scene consisted of a unit located in a blue colour, coloured four unit building. The front door to the residence was red in colour with a number displayed on it in face, phased faced is. Up on entering the front door, slightly northwest of the door was a living room area with a round table and chairs. Surrounding it, an automatic litter box on each one of them. Immediately northwest of the table and chairs, and a small rack with an automatic cat feed on top. I could do one of them as well. The chairs, the litter box and the cat feeder, immediately north of the table, the chairs, the litter box and the cat feeder. The living room area had been separated by two room dividers. One divider stemmed from the east wall of the living room towards the west. Now, I didn't realise how much they'd have to know that you'd have to know what. Like, I'd have to use one of them, um, what is it? Where it ties in north, east, west, or south. I'd have to use. Oh yeah, we're facing east. Okay, we're facing west. You know what I mean? They have to. They they are super clever. I wouldn't know my east, which way I was standing, and what wall was on what position. Oh my lord! Right. And on the other divider. Stemmed from the west wall of the living room towards the east, divided two creating a smaller section that was being used as a girl's room, hearing after referred to as victim's bedroom. Walking through the dividers, immediately northeast was a northeast of divider one, and on the east wall of the victim's bedroom was a dresser and a television. So the east northeast wall is where the uh, sliding doors are. Because they are sliding doors. They just don't use them as sliding doors. Right. So that's the side with the telet right. I know which is north east now. And several items on top of it. North of the dresser. Yeah. Dresser with a, was a table with a computer screen and several items on top of it. Yeah. West of the table with the computer screen was a rolling chair that was slightly covered with blankets and other items. So they have to know the north, what angle they're standing and everything. It's not, I went into the bedroom and on the left hand side was this, this, this and this. And on the right hand side there's this, this, this. They have to say north, east, north, west, north, east, south. You know what I mean? Right, north of the dresser was a table with a computer screen and several items on top of it. West of the table with the computer screen was a rolling chair. Was a uh, covered with blankets and other items. West of the chair and against the west wall of the victim's bedroom was a three-tier shelving unit, unit with miscellaneous items. South of the bed was a nightstand with miscellaneous items. South of the nightstand was divided two. Immediately north of the divided two and south east of the nightstand was a cat tower. Okay. Immediately east of the cat tower was a laundry basket. Yes. If anyone's been, I would, right, highly recommend anyone, if you haven't already done so, go over. And subscribe to Grizzly True Crimes. Why? She's got all this information, all the pictures, everything you want on this case. Everything. 
Rồi. Everything so please she really all of her with Miss Langis and rolling chair immediately east of it. South east of the rolling chair was another chair. South of the guest was the closet. South east of the closet and on the south wall of the bedroom was a door that led to a uh, bathroom. Right. Was a door that led to a bathroom. Immediately upon entering the bathroom and on the east wall was a bathroom vanity with a sink and miscellaneous items on top. Southwest of the bathroom vanity on the south wall was a bathtub. North of the bathtub on the northwest corner of the bathroom was a small trash can. East of the trash can was a toilet. East of the toilet was a walker with miscellaneous items on top. Oh my god, it's northwest. Right. South of the downstairs bedroom door was a closet. South of the closet was a pantry. South of the pantry was a set of stairs that led to the second floor. East of the stairs was a kitchen. Right. On the second floor, immediately east, immediately east upon walking up the stairs was a hallway. Along the north wall of the hallway was a laundry closet. South of the laundry closet was a half wall that separated the second floor from the stairs. The east end of the hallway extended from south to north, forming a second hallway. Crossed. The north edge of west wall of the second hallway canted slightly towards the northwest. The canted area of the wall had a door that led to a closet. Hallway closet. Take a breath. Slightly northwest of the hallway closet was another wall that slightly canted towards the northeast. On that wall, northwest corner of the second hallway was a door with a silver coloured plaque on it with the number two. The door led to bedroom with a bathroom. Bedroom two. Oh my lord. Immediately upon entering bedroom two and on the east wall was a bed. North of the bed was a closet. West of the closet and on the north wall was a nightstand with miscellaneous items on top. West of the nightstand in the northwest corner was a bookshelf. South of the bookshelf was a dresser with a television and miscellaneous items on top. South of the dresser was a wooden clothing rack. South of the clothing rack in the corner between the west and south wall was a trash can. East of the trash can on the south wall was a table with a built-in shelving with food items on top and a fridge underneath. Between the trash can and the table with the built-in shelf and still on south wall was a door that led to a bathroom. Now that's a bedroom, I believe. Jen mentioned how much they're charging for those rooms. And for that room, I think they're charging 800 some a month. Right? And I think that's because it had the ensuite bathroom. Uh, northwest of the bathtub and on the west wall was a toilet with a cabinet. Adjacent to the toilet was a trash can. Slightly northwest of the trash can, against the north wall of the bathroom, was a hamper. Right. East of bedroom two. Oh, God. Oh, I'm going to highlight it so you can see. See where we are. Okay. I know it's long, it's tedious, but believe me, it's. In, it's. You need to know this information to try and figure out what happened, right? East of bedroom two, on the northeast corner of the second hallway, was a door with a silver coloured plaque on it with the number three. The door led to a bedroom, bedroom three. Upon entering bedroom three, on the east wall was a dresser, north of the dresser was a closet. East of the closet, in the north is corner of the bedroom was a hamper. South of the hamper and on the east wall was a bed. South of the bed was a nightstand. South of the nightstand in the south is corner of the bedroom was a mirror. West of the mirror on the south wall was a desk with miscellaneous items on top. West of the desk was a round cart with miscellaneous items. West of car was a trash can. Right. Okay. 
Safe a bedroom suite on the east wall of the second hallway was a door with a silver coloured plaque on it written on back four. The door led to bedroom four. Upon entering bedroom four, on the south wall was a trash can. East of the trash can was a chest with a television on top. East of the chest was a closet. North of the closet cornered between the east and north wall was a bed. East of the bed, west of the bed was an outstand with miscellaneous items on top. West of the outstand in the corner between the north and the west wall was the mini fridge. Southwest of the mini fridge on the west wall was a table with miscellaneous items on top. Oh, God. I'm just going to get rid of this. Get rid of that. Okay. South of bedroom four, still on the east wall of the second hallway, was a door that led to a bathroom. Over on. Still on the east wall was the hall, second hallway, it was a door that led to a bathroom. Upon entering the bathroom, on the south wall was a bathroom vanity with a sink. East of the vanity was a toilet. Immediately north east of the toilet on the wall was a bathtub. Slightly your southwest of the bathtub at the south end of the second hallway was an alcove with a fridge and miscellaneous items on top of it. The following items of evidential value were observed throughout the residence. Oh my lord. Downstairs bedroom. Now this is a list of the items, okay? And I'm not sure, it says down, I'm not sure. I'll have to have a look to see what else. Right, okay. I think what we're going to be reading now is the mother's bedroom. The items. Downstairs bedroom, description, location, okay? So the description is... The descri location is downstairs, description is bedroom. The silver-coloured Apple brand laptop, SN whatever, with a clear-coloured in-case brand laptop case, under pillow on bed. Wow, I've never had my laptop under the pillar. Black coloured WD brand easy store model drive with a USB cable attached inside drop top drawer of nightstand south of bed. Okay. Black coloured HP brand laptop inside a cart in the closet. Black and brown WT3130 brand tripod. White coloured Royal Living brand king size comforter. Purple coloured unknown brand pillowcase with constellation design. Grey coloured unknown brand fuzzy blanket inside closet. Grey coloured unknown brand fuzzy robe size large. Blue coloured members mark brand towel with green and yellowish dinosaurs designs. White coloured unknown brand pillowcase with a light purple constellation, constellation pattern. White coloured unknown brand towel with dark and light blue coloured stripes corner between closet and bathroom on the floor. Okay. Grey coloured Hurley brand crew neck sweatshirt unknown size. Black coloured Place brand biker shorts size XXL TTG 16. Biker shorts. Okay, who wears biker shorts? I can't see, I can't see either Jen or that piece of SHRT wearing biker shorts. Could you, oh God, no. No, I can't imagine, no, get that, I'll get that thought right out of my head. Biker shorts. No. no, 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 Right, for anyone on X who's here, who's just joined, we are going through just one of the documents, and I doubt if I get all of it done tonight. 
because we're only on page 22 of 52. But this is like an itemised list of what was in the room, okay? Black coloured place brand biker shorts, light coloured blue, pink brand panties, size small, on the floor between tub and sink in bathroom. Victim's bedroom description location. White coloured turby twist brand hair towel with a multi coloured cupcake design hanging on divider. Divider one. Pink brand blank black coloured panties size medium. Okay. You've got a small size in the mum's room and you've got a medium in the daughter's room. Hmm. Okay, I think hmm. Black coloured all my own brand brand tank top size medium. On the floor between divider one and just uh, I eighteen. White coloured utopia towels, brand house towels, top drawer of dresser facing the dresser. <sighs> Seventeen pairs of female underwear, purple with white and pale, pinky shiny flowers and white and light blue dots design. Haynes brand, size 12. Light purple with light blue top, elastic band, Haynes brand, size 12. Oh, you're not going to go for each pair. You know what I mean? Oh God, we're not going to go for each pair. We are, we are. We're going for every pair of pants. Right. Black coloured ambience brand tank top size large. Hmm. I don't think that says. I th I'd say that would be her mum's, but what? I th her mum's dirty Why are you wearing a tank top? Grey coloured loot wear exclusive brand Back to the Future shirt size extra large. Middle right drawer of dresser. Face in the dresser. Black coloured old navy brand shirt, extra size, size extra small. Black coloured Tommy Hill figure brand shirt, size medium. Side screen coloured old navy brand, long sleeve shirt, size extra small. Middle left drawer of the dresser, face in the dresser. Black coloured glam jams brand, multi coloured polka dot pants. Pink coloured notebook, bottom left drawer of dresser. Miscellaneous items of clothing and one towel. Light blue coloured shirt with rainbow logo made out of hard stripes, dots and leopard print design with the word It's my birthday, Tuesday, 2nd, 22. <sighs> That's when her birthday was on the 22nd. February the 22nd of 24, but on February the 22nd of not 2022, it's 22222. Two, two, two. Hi. Black coloured champions brand shield, size large. That is definitely not Madeline's, I'm telling you now. Um, black coloured brand panties, size medium, size small, size medium, size small. I'm not going through all of them. White coloured DKN brand towel with black coloured dotted lines and black coloured top and bottom ends from inside laundry basket. Right, well, inside that laundry basket was a pair of his boxes and something else of Stephen's inside that laundry basket. Photographs of the residents were taken utilising a Canon EOS RP digital camera as observed. 
The images consisted of overall mid-range and close-up views of the residents. Its contents and items of the evidentiary value, all Im- images captured, were uploaded to www.evidence.com. Oh, I want to peek go there. The scene was digitally recorded through two video recordings as observed. One video was uploaded to whatever. The other video was uploaded to a Unable have to be uploaded due to its size. The SD digital media storage card containing all photos of the residents and both features have also been submitted into evidence. Seven finalised sketches of the residents were completed using Farozone 3D software and was transferred to the records unit. The sketches are not to scale and all measurements are approximately. The following physical evidence was collected from the residents, packaged and submitted to Kissimmee Police Department Evidence Unit. Right, first one. Silver coloured Apple brand laptop with a clear coloured ink house brand laptop. Next one. Black coloured WB brand Easy Store model drive. SNW with a USB cable. Black coloured HP brand laptop, black and brown coloured WT313 brand tripod, white coloured turbo twist brand head on with multi coloured cupcake design, pink brand, black coloured panties, size medium, black coloured, purple, god, the list just goes on. It, it, you know what I mean? It's, Every pair of panties she had. That tank top, size large. Black coloured ambience brand tank top, size large. I can't see Madeline being in a large. You know what I mean? I can't. Right, so it's listed everything that was took. Uh-huh. Right, what have we got here? Yeah, look, on February 26, at approximately 18.53 hours in 911 systems, called 911 to make a missing person report. Like, states, she's calling on behalf of Jennifer Soto, who's the mother of Madeline Soto. Madeline is a 13-year-old female who's missing was reported missing from Hunters Creek. Well, we'll call 911 two different times after the initial call to Orange County. Oh, right. Wanting to know why deputies haven't responded yet. This incident will be doc- documented on the Orange County Sheriff's case. I'm going to say because they turned up about 7.30, 7.45, something like that. So that was to be the last phone call I made to the police. All right. Seeing all this, read all that before. A lot of it. Right, here are they, but we will read some of this. Ron, what time is it? 2.27. No, what I'm going to do is I'll mark it with a different colour so that I know where we But what page are we on? I'll just write it down. 
and we'll continue with this um maybe tomorrow night we'll continue tomorrow night tomorrow night so we're on page 28 of 52 and this is only one document oh god this is only one document right because it's getting later it's like 10 30 here on the evening and if I don't wind down, then I'll be up again till about 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to call it a day. I'd just like to say thank you to those on X for being here. And for those that were on YouTube earlier. Um, please, if you're watching, if you haven't already, please like this video. Show me some love on X. I really do appreciate it and consider subscribing to the channel because like I said earlier I was having trouble with X again so not every time will I be able to go live on X so if you subscribe to my YouTube channel you can still watch on X if you wanted to just come over to YouTube subscribe then if I cannot at any time get on X you will be notified that I'm going live and you can come and watch me on YouTube. So, I'm going to leave it there because this is a long card. I need to start earlier, but if I start too early, then I'm... No, there's a lot of people who go to other channels and watch other channels, you see, so... Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Stop screen. I'm going to leave it there for you for now. Sorry about that. It's just that these documents are so long. And I don't want to really just skip over it, skip over it, skip over it. I'd like to be able to. Yes, the evidence that they took in. There's some questionable things about that, like the size of the sizes of the clothes and clothes of the size of the pants and Things like that. Why are they in Maggie's room? And it doesn't make sense. I don't understand why large size clothing would be in Maggie's room. Yes, I like oversized t shirts. I wear, I buy a lot of oversized t shirts, right? But I normally wear a jacket or something as well. So don't look stupid when I'm out. But I wear oversized t-shirts for comfort. I don't like any tightness around my arms and my back or anything like that. So it's more for comfort. But I don't go large. I'm a 10 to 12. So if anything, I'd go 12 to 14. But I wouldn't go any larger than that. So. Please come and join me. I'll be back on again tomorrow night talking about this, continuing with this, right? I'm on page 28. We're at the bottom of page 28, so I know. Okay? I'll hit it down. Just making a reference bottom paragraph. So I know where to start from tomorrow night. Right, and we'll also watch that second interview with Stefan Stones with the crime, sex, sex crimes unit, okay? That's Orange County. So we'll be watching that as well tomorrow night. And you'll see what he says to what he says in the statements totally different and I still can't get my breath that everything that that woman has said about seeing Magdalene not seeing Magdalene then seeing Magdalene and all this love 
has just been wiped under the carpet. Why? I don't know. Because they don't need her as a witness against him. They have got enough evidence against him. They don't need her. But she has lied several times over and over again. Right? And not tonight, I just heard that one bit where he said he got back at quarter, quarter past ten and Jen was there. No, she wasn't. She was at the doctor's. And that's what that detective picked up on. Because he said, uh, just to go back over something, because I'm not sure if I got it down correctly, or something like that, he said. And he said, so what time did you get back from the shop? And he said, quarter past ten. And he said, and he said, who was it? Was anyone here? And he said, yes, Jen was. And he knew Jen wasn't because Jen had already said she was at a doctor's appointment having her blood done. And that's something that will confirm where she was. Just phone a doctor's up. Can you confirm that Jen Soto was here for her appointment at 10.15 on Monday the 26th? They don't need to know why. Jen had already told them why, but they don't need to know why. So they're not giving out any information that they shouldn't be. So anyway, till tomorrow, stay safe. And I'll see you all next time.